I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of courage, hope, and compassion on Rescue 911. We begin on December 7th, 1989, near a logging site in the mountains of southern Oregon, as temperatures drop below freezing. It was the dead of winter. Friends since high school. Mechanics Ken Murdoch and Ken Leppard had already been on the job for hours that morning. We finished our work up there and decided we'd head for town. It was getting close to Christmas and it was a really cold, misty day. I mean, the type of cold that no matter how many clothes you wear, it just kind of seeps right through you. We headed down the mountain and come to the gate down there. Lep walked up, opened the gate, and uh, I was sitting in the truck waiting for him to get back in. And I wasn't paying much attention, but he was out there for a few minutes. I was fumbling with the lock, and as I was messing with it, I looked down over the bank there, and I seen this blanket. I kept glancing back at it and thinking, you know, yes, no, yes, no, you know, go go check it out, forget it. I almost left and just something just said, no, go look at it. I reached out and seeing the blood and everything, I didn't really know what to expect. But uh, I thought to myself, if I've got to look at this, Ken does too. Get down here and tell me this isn't what I think it is. Fine. I walked over the bank and saw the blanket down there. I didn't realize he'd been down and even looked at it. So I just walked down and opened the blanket up, and first thing I saw was a placenta and the umbilical cord all wrapped up there. At that point, I started to get real nervous about opening it up the rest of the way. Neither of the Kens were prepared for what was inside when the blanket was fully unwrapped. A newborn baby. When I first saw him, he was just all white and blue and didn't look like he was alive. So I jumped back up on the bank trying to hold my stomach down. I ran over and got on the radio and called the office. Told them that we needed a state police or the sheriff out there as fast as we could. We found something. I really didn't want to say over the radio what I'd found. I thought he was dead. Police car or sheriff's car. When logging company mechanics Ken Leppard and Ken Murdoch found a newborn baby abandoned by the side of the road. The tiny child was nearly frozen to death. The two men radioed a desperate call for help that was relayed immediately to 911. 911 emergency. This is Sharon at Cascade Timber Company. Mm -hmm. I have a, a mechanic and some people up by the, the burn that was up at the lake. He just called in and he said to please hurry with a sheriff or a state policeman up to that gate that goes in. He's very shook up. He said they have found something. Okay. And he sounds extremely agitated, and I've never heard him that way before. Lep told me he thought he'd heard something. He thought the baby was alive, so I ran back down the bank and checked him, and he moved one eyelid just a little bit, I think. He's alive, Lep. He's just like a piece of cold meat out of the refrigerator. The blanket was soaking wet that he was wrapped in. He was froze stiff, and heck, I didn't know what to do. We were scared to death he was going to die on us. Are you still there, Sharon? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, Jesus, okay, we'll do. He said someone has dumped a baby out there. It's still alive. They need an ambulance. They want to meet him somewhere along the line. He said if they, they're going to wrap it up if you want to meet him somewhere along the line. He said that baby's not going to make it much longer. They need an ambulance. Okay, we'll get, we'll get somebody out there. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Emergency units were immediately dispatched. With each passing second, the baby's life was slipping away. You could see he was really close to dying. First thought was to get him warm, so I stripped my coveralls off, took my sweatshirt off, and slid it underneath him so it'd be halfway dry. I'm getting him in the truck. We both looked at each other and said, let's not wait. You know, we can't wait. He's too close. So 
We just finally just picked him up and set him in the front seat of the truck and rolled the windows up and turned the heater up all the way and uh, on one hand telling each other, you know, well, he's going to be all right. And Ken kept telling him, you know, you're, you're going to be okay, little guy, you know. And, and uh, then in the back of our minds thinking uh, he's too far gone. They headed for the hospital. Both of us were just so scared that he wasn't going to make it. You could see just right on the edge. So I just kept talking to him. You're all right. Yeah. Sheriff's deputy Tom Johnson went to the scene. It really hit home hard. Because here's a brand new baby. It appears the woman that had the baby possibly had the baby right there and then just wrapped it up and just discarded it. So like so much baggage. I saw this pickup truck flashing its headlights up and down. It's a newborn. He's not going to make it very long. The baby's color was, he almost looked blue-gray. It almost didn't even look like he was alive. Fish Pass 31, we're quick having an ambulance response code 3. This is a brand new baby. Ken just gathered the baby up and went around to the back of the ambulance, and they met him there. And they had to chase him out of the back of the ambulance. He was going to go with them. You form a bond real quick with a baby like that. And you sit there and hold on to him so tight. And you just, I didn't want to put him down. It was a funny feeling, you know, like, you just feel like he's yours. You know? Not something you want to just walk away and leave. Something you want to take home with you and hold him tight. Paramedic Brian Gronke examined the newborn baby. The baby was just white. It was so cold. We have hypothermic thermometers which go down to 84 degrees and they wouldn't even read on air. You couldn't get any pulses as far as like on his neck or on his arm or anything like that. I, I really didn't think he had a lot of chances. Twelve miles away at the Merle West Medical Center, an ER team was mobilized, including pediatric nurse Barb Bjorki. We did not assume it was going to be a baby that was frozen, was rigid, um, on death's door. When you laid him down in the ER, hooked him back up to the heart monitor, and his heart had stopped at that point. And I think that was probably the most scary part is when I first laid him down, I was like, it's over. You know, we've, you know, we've lost him. I couldn't even get his jaw open. He's just too cold. I don't hear anything. Let's put him back. See if we can get him in the bed. Yeah, go ahead. Dr. Trainer was next to me. We were suctioning the mouth. And she said, open the mouth. And I said, I'm trying. The baby was so cold. The jaw was rigid. Um, could barely get it to open. Pediatrician Dr. Charles Labui was also called into the emergency room. When I first got the call uh, and was leaving the office, I told my office staff that I didn't think it would be very long before I would be back because I, it didn't sound like this baby was salvageable. I thought the dear Lord would determine whether this baby was going to survive or not, and I just do my part. At the scene where the two Kens found the baby, sheriff's investigators looked for clues to help them find his mother. His rate's picking up a little bit. By 3 o'clock in the afternoon, two hours after he had been here, the baby's temperature had made it to 94 degrees. He was trying to cry and just improved constantly. It was just truly a miracle. Within a few hours, the baby was doing well enough to be transferred to the nursery and given a name, Benjamin Kenneth Forrest. I left at about 3.30 and turned Benjamin's care over to the nurse on the next shift. And at that point, I looked down. I said, you're going to make it, Ben. I just know that you are. I called the hospital, asked him if he was going to keep all his fingers and toes and everything because he was awfully cold. And they said, uh, is this one of the Kens? And I said, yeah. They said, well, you can come and see this baby 24 hours a day if you want to. They said, we consider you guys family. Of course, we got instantly attached to him. We both just fell in love with him. And it, the fact that we'd saved his life hadn't even really hit me yet. 
I think it was about the third night when we were up at the hospital and some women that had been up there several times visiting the baby watching through the windows. She walked up and asked me if I was one of the heroes. And <laughs> I just felt like climbing under the nearest table. You know, it just, that's not me. I'm, you know, it's you just do what you have to do and you don't uh, think of it in that text. It was a Christmas story kind of situation. We were preparing for Christmas, and here this baby from nowhere was brought into us. You could just feel the unifying force surrounding Benjamin. In the true spirit of Christmas, the baby who had no family and nowhere to live received hundreds of offers from people who wanted to help. After two weeks in the hospital, baby Benjamin was adopted. Christmas had a lot to do with it. As a matter of fact, when we were out being interviewed, they kept trying to put some religious ties to it. You know, do you think God had anything to do with this and everything? And Ken and I both kind of looked at each other, and then uh, he said, uh, no, but he said, it does make you believe in Santa Claus. I thought that was really cute. He's not cute, but that was cute. <laughs> That Ferrari. <laughs> Baby Benjamin might never know the two Kens who saved his life, but the memory of him and the events of that cold December day will be with them forever. Recently I had a birthday and we were talking about little Benjamin that day and hoping that he has a lot of happy birthdays in the future. I'm sure he will.